In this video, I'm going to show you how I paint Middle Earth's Khazad Guard. Hello everyone, and welcome to another brushstroke painting guide. So this time I'm going to look at painting some Khazad Guard Dwarven Warriors. Now these are from Games Workshop's Middle Earth SPG range. Um, the figures are a little bit older than the stuff I've been painting recently, so the casts might not be too great. They are actually metal figures, um, but what they lack in detail they do make up for in character, and I really do love these, uh, these sculpts, and I have been meaning to paint them for a while. And when I say a while, they've been on my painting pile of shame for a couple of years, to say the least. Um, so I'm really looking forward to painting them. But before I start, I just want to say a massive thank you to everybody who has subscribed to the channel so far. I really do appreciate your support, and without you, I couldn't make these videos. So if you're watching this for the first time and you haven't subscribed yet, then please, please, please hit that subscribe button now. And don't forget to click the bell to be notified whenever I post another video. Regular viewers of the channel will know it's been quite a while since I posted a Middle Earth video. So if you'd like to see more Middle Earth content, then please hit that like button and drop a comment below of what you'd like to see. Because the more I know from you guys what you want to see, the more I can do paint videos that you'd like to watch. Okay, with that said, let's get on to the good bit and start some painting. Now straight away you'll see this is a bit different to my other videos because I'm going to paint two models in this video. And the reason for that is because there's actually a bit of variation between the models in the Khazad Guard range. Um, some have plate mail, some have chain mail for example. So just so I can cover as many bases as possible for you guys, I'm going to paint the two models together. As you can see, I've already prepared and primed these models ready for painting. If you'd like to know details and exactly how I do this, then please check out the link above. Right, okay then, moving on. So we're going to start off with base coating the models and this is the first variation between the two because this one has some leggings or trousers underneath and I'm going to start off by base coating those in Ferrisian Grey from Games Workshop. So, nice and easy step to start off with. Let's add a little bit of water to the paint just to help it flow cleanly and smoothly. Now, it might be a bit thin to cover in one go so apply it as a couple of layers to build up to a solid colour. You don't need to be particularly neat, just concentrate on getting the paint on cleanly and smoothly. Any mistakes that you do make will be tidied up with other colours later. So for the next base coat I'm going to paint in the gambeson or undershirt to all of the models and for this I'm going to use some Lauren Forest from Games Workshop. Exactly the same process then as the last step. Just add that little bit of water just to help it go on cleanly and smoothly. Now the coverage of this is actually quite good, but I'm still going to apply it as two thin layers to make sure I build up to that solid colour. And I'm remembering of course to pick out any of the sleeves of the gambeson that might be showing through the armour as well. Do take a little bit extra care when you get to any areas alongside the Ferrisian grey you've already painted. Uh, try and be as neat as possible, but if you do make any mistakes then don't panic, just let it dry fully and then go back and neaten things up again with some Ferrisian Grey. Moving on to the next step and that is going to be base coating in all the leather details on both models and that's anything from belts and straps to boots and gauntlets and for this I'm going to use some Mournfang Brown from Games Workshop. Just work your way around the model picking out all of those uh, leather details taking that extra little bit of care whenever you come to areas which are next to colours you've already painted to get those nice clean lines. If you do make any mistakes like before, just let it dry and correct with whatever colour you need. A uh, bit of a personal choice here, Games Workshop painted these models in with bare hands but I think that looks a bit weird so I'm going to paint these in with some leather gloves. I'm also going to paint in the armour trim as leather, but you could quite easily paint these as a brighter colour just to give that extra bit of variety to your armour if you like. Moving on now, I'm going to base coat in all of the silver details, so that's like the chain mail, um, the axe heads, the armour plates on the boots, that kind of thing. And for this I'm going to use graphite from Darkstar Miniatures. If not familiar with Dark Star Miniature Paints, they are definitely worth checking out. I think they are amongst the best metallics you can get. They're really rich and vibrant and have a very, very fine metallic pigment to them so that they go on really smooth. 
I'll put a link in the description below. In fact, I'll do it for all of the paints I use today so you can check out the full range. But like I say, definitely worth checking out. For this particular one, I've added a little bit of water because I need it to go into all of these little dimples in the chain mail. And obviously I want it to go on nice and smoothly. I think just to add a bit of interest to the helmet, I'm going to paint them as a bit of a two-tone. So I'll do the inserts here in silver and then probably the trim in gold. I'll also paint in the armor on the boots here in silver and then obviously any axe heads and weapons and things around on the model I'll do in silver too. For the next step I'm going to paint in all the gold details that's like the uh, face mask on the helmet, um, the plate armor and uh, belt buckles etc and for this I'm going to use rich gold from Pro Acryl. As it's the uh, Dwarves of Khazad Doom, obviously they were really obsessed with their gold and the quality of their gold would be rich and vibrant. So I'm going for a paint that reflects that. And this Pro Acryl rich gold is exactly that. It's got a deep, rich, honey-like color and um, it's pretty much like painting with liquid gold. So it just needs a little bit of water um, and it will cover pretty much anything in one coat really. It's an absolutely wonderful paint. So I'm just going to add a bit of extra detail to the chain mail by painting in a gold trim. Um, it's actually pretty straightforward to do quite a neat line because the chain mail already has these little uh, rows of holes. So you can just paint along one row and get a nice, clean, neat line. Right, with all that gold painted in, they're already looking pretty cool. Uh, so now I'm gonna paint in the axe handles, and for this I'm gonna use a dark wood color of Dryad Bark from Games Workshop. Pretty straightforward step this, obviously just take your time and be as neat as possible. Um, if you do make any mistakes and get paint on other details, then just let this paint dry and paint the other colors back in just to neaten everything back up again. In addition to their main axe, many of the sculpts have additional hand axes in their belts, so don't forget to paint in the handles of those as well. And for a final base coat, I'm going to paint in the beard and hair now, and for this I'm going to use Gorthor Brown from Games Workshop. So as this beard has a lot of texture and recesses, I've made sure that the paint is quite fluid. So I've added that little bit extra water so that it goes into all of these creases. Uh, it does mean that makes the paint quite thin. So when this dries, I will be applying a second coat to make sure I get a solid color. Seeing as I'm painting two models, let's do the second beard a different color. So let's base this one with Althorn Gray from Games Workshop. Moving on now to adding some shadow to our base colors. And for this, I'm gonna start off with the Pharisian gray, and I'm gonna use a 50-50 mix of Space Wolves gray and Contrast Medium from Games Workshop. So the aim here is to let the wash settle into all the recesses. So just uh, encourage it with your brush so that it puddles into the deepest parts and then let that dry completely before moving on to the next stage. And with that first wash dry, it's now time to apply our next wash to all of the green details. And for this, I'm going to use Athonian Camo Shade from Games Workshop. Now, I have no idea if that's how you pronounce it, but that's the first take I've done where I haven't said Camel Shade. So um, I'm sticking with that one. Straightforward step, though, just apply the wash over all of the green details and let it uh, settle into all those deeper recesses to add that deeper shadow. Um, again, let it dry fully before moving on to the next step. Moving on now to the next wash, and this is going to be to all of the gold and leather details. And for this, I'm going to apply a wash of Seraphim Sepia from Games Workshop. Now, I found that it was this stage that really started to bring the model to life. The, uh, the sepia really does bring an extra warmth and depth to the gold and leather details. Uh, you can be quite generous in the application of this, but obviously you do need to make sure that it is fully dry before moving on to the next stage. which is going to be applying a wash to all of the silver details. And for this, I'm going to use Null Oil from Games Workshop. 
Now this is exactly the same process as we've been doing with all the other washers. The only thing to be careful of here is when you apply it to the chain mail, these little holes sometimes will trap air and not let the uh, wash flow into them. So just be careful of that. If any bubbles form, make sure you pop them because if you don't, when it dries, it forms a little gap and it can look quite ugly. So when applying the wash to larger flatter areas, such as the axe heads here, um, don't let it settle on the flatter areas. Instead, just um, push it around and encourage it to settle into the creases and the edges. That way you should avoid any ugly tide marks forming when it dries. To shade the white beard, I'm going to apply an all over wash of Apothecary White from Games Workshop. Uh, so for this application, I'm applying it neat straight from the bottle. I haven't thinned it down with any contrast medium at all. Um, the only thing to bear in mind with this particular colour is it does need a lot of shaking to make sure it's fully mixed before applying it. Um, and then with it being a contrast paint, you will need to let it dry fully before moving on to the next stage. Which brings us on to the last wash for these models, and this is going to be to the um, brown beard and hair, and also to the axe handles. And for this, I'm going to use some Agrax Earthshade from Games Workshop. Now at this stage, you could quite easily say these are tabletop ready and you could stop there. But if you wanted to add a bit more detail, then let's move on to some layers. And I'm going to start off with the trousers and layer with some Farisian Grey from Games Workshop. So the aim of this step is to brighten the colour back up again. By adding that shade, it's added some great definition and shadow into the recesses, but it has darkened the overall colour down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a thin layer of the Pharisian Grey over the higher areas and leave the shade in all the recesses to keep that shadow. This will increase the contrast level and really brighten things up. Next, I'm going to do exactly the same thing again to all of the green details, and this time I'm going to add a layer of Lauren Forest from Games Workshop. Just as before then, you're looking to apply a layer to all of the raised areas and leave that shade in all of the darker recesses and creases. So moving on now, and I'm going to brighten up all of the silver details, and for this I'm going to use Pewter from Darkstar Miniatures. Okay, so I found the easiest way to highlight the chainmail was to use a sort of a dry brush style technique. I have very little paint in the bristles, I've removed most of it onto some tissue, um, and I'm just using the side of the brush just to catch those edges that I want to highlight, and it leaves all the recessed areas nice and dark with the shade. Um, I'm not using an actual dry brush because that doesn't give us much control and I find that you have to then correct a lot of the um, over dry brushing. This gives you a lot more control and you can just pick out those top edges really quickly. Just be careful you don't put too much pressure here. You're just wanting those bristles to very lightly skim the surface and that's just enough to add the paint and bring back that brightness. And then for the other details, like the axe heads, etc., it's normal painting style again. So um, a little water just to thin it down and then apply a thin layer across the surface. Now you're not looking to build up a solid color here. In fact, actually, it's quite nice to have a bit of um, interest and texture and that shade uh, showing through. So it could be a bit of like uh, wear and tear on the axe, etc. So um, build it up to a finish that you're happy with. So now I'm going to brighten up all of the gold details and for this I'm going to use Liberator Gold from Games Workshop. Um, exactly the same process as we've been doing before. You want to pick out those um, raised areas and leave the shade in all of the recesses. Now Liberator Gold is a wonderful colour. It's actually a very thin paint um, so you can't really use it as a base colour but on top of other colors, it still keeps the richness of the color underneath, but adds that really, really bright shine. So on top of this gold, it just really pops. 
Painting in each individual armour panel can be a little time consuming for this stage, but it is well worth it, so just take your time and work your way around the model and brighten up each of those panels. Right then, with those colours nice and bright again, it's time to add some edge highlights to them. And I'm going to start off with all the leather details, and for this I'm going to use Scrag Brown from Games Workshop. So the main aim really for edge highlighting is to bring more definition and really bring out those details. So for example, the top edge of this belt here, I'm just going to run my paintbrush along the edge just so that it picks out that very top edge and really makes it stand out. If you'd like to know some more tips and tricks in terms of improving your edge highlighting, then I've made a video which you can check out by clicking the link above. Uh, in this case though, it's just a case of working your way around the model and picking out all the edges of the leather items which the light would catch most and just bring out those details. Okay then, so that brings us on now to highlighting the brown beard and hair, and for this I'm going to use some Steel Legion Drab from Games Workshop, where I'm just looking to pick out the topmost edges in the beard and the hair. And then repeat that exact same process for the grey beard using some Bold Titanium White from Pro Acryl. Right, okay then, so moving on, and the next highlight I'm going to do is to the green gamerson, and I'm going to pick out those edges with some Nurgling Green from Games Workshop. Which brings me on now to edge highlighting all of the metallics. So I'm going to do both the gold and the silver with the same colour, which is going to be chrome from Vallejo. This is exactly the same process as we've been doing in the last couple of stages. Just work your way around the model, picking out those topmost edges where the light would catch the most, and really bringing that um, highlight and brightness to the armour. And again for the chainmail you can use the uh, dry brush, edge brush kind of technique just to pick out the topmost edges and bring in that shine. And of course not forgetting to add a highlight to all of the little rivets on the armour just to make those really pop out as well which leaves us with just one last highlight to add and that's going to be to all of the wooden axe handles and for this I'm going to use Mornfang Brown from Games Workshop. which just leaves the bases to finish off and I think I'm going to go for a bit of a rocky snow theme using the techniques you can find in this video above. And with those bases all painted up, the Khazad Guard are complete. Um, I really hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, then please do give it a like and drop me a comment below. If you'd like to see more Middle Earth content, then again, please drop me a comment below and tell me what you'd like to see. As I mentioned in the intro to this video, it is the support from you guys which keeps this channel going. So if you have enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more, then please do hit that subscribe button and don't forget to click on the notification bell so that you'll be told whenever I post another video. So now all of you guys have done that, I can say thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you again in another video very soon.